I don't know if this would be helpful, but offer a little bit of a framing on this. Um, I think there's a distinction that's worth drawing, although we, there's, it's kind of a continuum, but there's the ethical, there's the unethical and there's the criminal. I mean, if you said, if you said the words, well, you know, murder is unethical, you'd say, well, you know, that's just not a strong enough word to apply to the word, to the crime of murder. I mean, it, it's criminal. It's, it's something that's well beyond. Some ethical violations we are deeming egregious, egregious enough to be criminal, but the things that have happened in the, um, Recent past of the State House, the, you know, the Diane Wilkerson scandal with the cash for liquor licenses, and the Sal Macy scandal with the, uh, you know, this elaborate check scheme to reward him apparently for issuing contracts. Those are things that have, you know have been illegal for for centuries. There's nothing complicated about judging those events. I mean, if they happened as they've been alleged, and those are all proved out. When they're all proved, there'll be no question in anybody's mind that those things were outrageous, and they were wrong. Um, now, I believe that our greatest protector of public integrity, apart from you know who we are and so forth as a culture, is the federal law enforcement apparatus. In every state in the country, the central role. A central role of every U.S. attorney is to bring public integrity cases, be it against legislators, judges, police officers, people who have significant amounts of, of power and responsibility, uh, are hard to reach for state law enforcement authorities. It's just it's, it's hard for state law enforcement authorities to uh, bring cases on public integrity issues for a whole lot of reasons. But the federal government, I mean, there's two big, two big reasons. One, that the two big advantages that the federal government has. Number one, their total independence from local politics. I mean, they're, there's always a matter of degree. But the U.S. Attorney's Office, being you know, the U.S. Attorney being appointed by the president, who has no particular local allegiances, is very, very independent from local political influences. So they go where they want to go. They're not worried about their budget. They're not worried about their, their re repercussions in the future. They go where they want to go, and they bring the cases they want to bring. The second thing that they have in, in abundance, and I hope this continues, you know, as the federal government start for resources, we may feel it changes, but they have vastly superior resources to, to any state law enforcement agency. The, you know, the ability to bring to bear a, a large amount of you know, FBI resources or other resources to, to, a, to, to drill into a criminal situation and take the evidence and really massage it through to you find what really happened. They have superior ability to do that, and they have superior, a, very, a much more powerful sentencing apparatus. I mean, the, the penalties under federal law tend to be much higher than the penalties under state law. These, and uh, so the, most people end up pleading guilty and settling. I mean, when you get, tried, you get indicted in federal court, the odds are you're going to plead guilty and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to pay a significant penalty. Uh, whereas in, in the state process, the case may be weaker, may not be as, as deeply drilled. So I want to make that point first, is the truly criminal stuff, we have an apparatus in place that addresses that, and you've seen it. You know, Diane Wilkerson's indicted, Sal Macy's indicted, and look back over the time. All the big cases, all the big political cases have been indicted by the federal government, and that is what it is, and it's that way in every state across the country. 